Hi everyone, in this short video we're going to go from Jira beginner to Jira master. So this will help you at work and help you run your projects. Let's get straight into it. The first thing we want to do is to go to Jira. We can search for that in Google and it's the first thing that comes up. So if we select that, we just want to create an account online uh, or sign up if you already have an account with Jira. Once you've signed up, if we just go to Jira, it's going to have any of the projects that you already have, uh, or if you haven't got any, then we're going to create one. Let's just go to create project, and we're going to create a scrum project so we can work with sprints and a backlog and a Kanban board. So we're going to go to software development, just down to scrum, select use template, and for this particular one, remember Jira is free for one to 10 users. So this is really, really great. And so for the purpose of this video, we're just going to go team managed. This means our particular project won't impact any other projects. Uh, if you want it to be company managed, it could be centrally managed by Jira admins. So that can be very handy if you've got multiple projects and you need them to run in a similar way. But for our purposes, let's go to a team managed project. We'll give our project a name and then Jira gives us a key. So this key is going to be used on all our user stories. Uh, and this is just a, a little project that we've used in some of the courses that we have on Agile and project management. So we put that name in and we say create project. And now you can see we've got our blank space in Jira. The two main spaces we're going to be using are our backlog and our board initially. I'm going to go to the backlog first and Let's select our epics. We'll show the epic panel here and you can press E and that also does that. If I click away, now we've got the epic panel. And what I want to do is just put in the high level features that we're going to be delivering. And that's going to give us something to work with initially. So we go to create epic and we just type it in. So we've got Harmony web page and press enter and that will go through. And then we can keep adding these as we go. If we make a mistake, uh, as you can see here, I've just misspelled that, we can put, up, put the drop down menu here and click view all details. It will open it up for us and then I can correct my spelling over here on the Epic card itself. Click on the tick and now we're ready to begin. I'm just going to close this down and we'll work in the backlog to start. If we select these epics, we can also change the color, which I think is a wonderful idea because then you can clearly see uh, the differences and the different epics that are being worked on and how they're going. Now, the next thing we're going to do is work in our backlog. The backlog at the very bottom here is everything that we have and we can start adding cards by clicking create for example user stories let's create our first user story we just type in the name of our user story here we can select the type of user story maybe it's a bug a story or if we click on manage types we can add different types like risks or spikes so with our user story if we've written that in we can just click enter now, if we click on that user story, it will open up some more details so we can add more details down the side here, or we can work with it in the backlog. For example, the epic that we're looking at, we can click on that epic and we can select a different one, which is Harmony web page, because that's what we're looking for, a user-friendly web page. We can leave it in to do. Now over here, we've got the assignee and I'll just assign that to myself because I'm the only person in this project at the moment. And the user story points, if we click on that as a team, if we decide and we estimate the effort for that particular user story, let's say we put that as a five, we can add that to the user story card. And now we've got a lot of the great information that we need. When we click on the card, we can add a description and the description might be our acceptance criteria. We can add things like a bullet list or we can add pictures very, very easily. We can go ahead and create a whole bunch more user stories and here's one that I've prepared earlier. And once we have that, the best thing we can do is to create one of our sprints. So if we click create a sprint, as you can see, we've got sprints one through seven currently. To edit this sprint, we can add the dates over here and we can make it a custom duration or a two week duration. If we select two weeks and click on the start date, then it will automatically give us our end date we can put a sprint goal in there as well. If we update that, now we have the dates for our sprints. If we need to edit that again, we can go back to these three dots over here and edit the sprint. 
and I'll just select a different date because I got that wrong and now we're ready to go. If we ever want to add items to a sprint, we can select them down the left hand side here or we can hold shift while we select one and click down to the one that we want to go to. Now we can drag these up into a sprint like this or we can right click and we can say move work item to a different particular sprint if we wanted to move these into sprint five or six for example. Now that we have our items in the backlog and we've got some sprints full of work, one more thing with our backlog that's quite nice to see is the story points. So we can see our velocity, how we're going, and once we've completed a few sprints, we can uh, make sure that we're matching our work to our velocity. But in sprint two, for example, we've got 31 story points. None are in progress and none are done currently. So if our velocity is around 30 story points, this is perfect because we've got 31 story points uh, and similar around 23 coming up or 25. So maybe our velocity is around 25. So what we're going to do now is start the first sprint. And if we just go up to the top, we've got our sprint one. Let's click on start sprint. We just check that everything is correct. We can add our sprint goal, what we want to complete during the sprint and then click start. Now that's going to put all of these cards that we have, that we put in our backlog, onto our Kanban board. We can switch back to the backlog at any time by clicking on backlog. But while we're on the board, let's start here. So we've got everything in to do, and we've got a few different columns that you might see. These are not the standard columns, but you can add columns very, very easily just by going to the right hand side and clicking on the plus symbol. So plus symbol, we can type in any column and press enter. And now we have a new column. We can click on that and drag it back to anywhere that we want. And so if you do need that new column, then there it is. I'll click on these three dots and just click on delete. So that's not in our way. And we can say where we want the cards to move to if we do delete a column. But I'm just going to stick with to do, development, testing, sign off, and done. You can also do fancy things with your Kanban board. If we go to more actions and if we manage custom filters, you can see I've created a custom filter. It's a very, very basic one. With custom filters, we'll need to know a little bit of JQL or Jira query language. And this is what it looks like. For example, if our assignee is the current user, then it's going to show only those cards who are assigned to the current user, who would be myself at this stage. If you need to know more about Jira query language, you can Google it and Google the different ideas or the different filters that you can set up or the query language that you might need to use. While we're in project settings down the side here, which we can collapse or expand just in the top left hand side, let's go to work types. As you can see, we've got the different work types here. So epic, bug, risk, a little bit of slack, a spike, story, or a task. You can add these or change these and modify these in any way that you like. Or you can add a work type if you really want to with a new name and a different icon that you can select or upload yourself. Now we're going to go back to the board. If I click on Harmony Web App, that will take us back to the project. And what we're going to do is pretend that our team have been working very, very hard and we're dragging items across and they can be assigned to, to different people on the board. They can be modified too, so we can change all of these things. So we're going to drag across most of these, but we'll leave one item left, but all of these will be done. And let's pretend that it's two weeks later, we want to finish the sprint. We're just going to click complete sprint. So as you can see, we've got that here and we want to move any open work items to the next sprint, so we complete that. Now you can see we've got sprint two and we've got the card that rolled over from the previous sprint. And what we want to do is if we're all ready to go and we've done our sprint planning and we're happy with the amount of user story points that we have and it's matched to our velocity and it's the highest priority items according to the product owner, then we can click start sprint, make sure the dates are correct put in our sprint goal and start that one again. Once we've done two or three sprints, we can start looking at our velocity and making sure that our work matches 
our velocity. Our velocity is the number of user story points that we can complete during a sprint. And as you can see, each of these user stories has an estimate for the amount of user story points. What we're going to go to is reports up in the top here. If you can't see that, just click on the plus button and it should be in our extra options down here. You can add or remove these from your navigation. But I'm going to go to reports and I'm, well, there's a few things. We can see the sprint burn down chart or the velocity report. Let's go to the velocity report first. This one's really important when we're running a scrum team. And as you can see, because we've completed three sprints, we had committed to 27 points and completed 21. And as you can see, the next one we committed 31 and completed 28. And now we have an average. So around 25 user story points, we could keep our sprints to around 25 user story points to maintain a sustainable pace within the team. If we go back to reports and down to the burn down chart, if we select the sprint that we're working in, now I've just done these all on the same day, so it's not going to show us, but usually over the two weeks, it will show us the work as it goes down. And here's the ideal trend. And we can see that work going down as we complete it during the sprint. That's our sprint burn down chart. So now we've been creating work. We've been managing our backlog, making sure our velocity, our work is matched to our velocity. One last thing that we'll want to do, especially for the product owners in the team, we can go to our timeline and here are the epics. So the, the high level features and uh, here are all the user stories within them. If we click that drop down, but just at a high level, this is a wonderful way to see it. We can move this very, very easily. This can become our product roadmap. So now with our product roadmap, we can see at a glance, it's like a Gantt chart, where our items might be starting and finishing. And that's going to give us something to talk to with executives or stakeholders uh, as they can see those features being completed. So that is Jira in a nutshell from start to finish, setting it up, creating cards, creating epics, creating a timeline, creating a Kanban board and managing all of those wonderful things. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.